today we are with Tony Ferrer, who is the environmentalist and the tourism specialist, who is going to explain to us the importance of this area where we are, the Papatin Makonja mountain land, and what it offers as a tourism facility in the province. Good morning, Tony. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well, and thank you for coming. Thanks very much for you to be available for us. And one of my first questions, if you can just explain to, to us, what is the story behind the Papatin Makonja Mountains? Right, it's quite a long story. It was first formally proposed by a senior geologist for world heritage status back in the 1980s. And between now and then, obviously, the local folks around Barberton started picking up the idea in the early 2000s and we started formally talking about how to get World Heritage status in about 2006, 2007. And from there we, we went through the planning process, we got government money to pay for the planning work and we had a few hiccups and eventually the nomination dossier was presented to UNESCO in July 2018 and it was proclaimed Mpumalanga's first World Heritage Site in that year, in July. And it's, the, it's proclaimed entirely for the geology, for its rocks. It's not that they're so spectacular to look at, it's that the research which has been done on these rocks, which are some of the oldest in the world, has yielded more information from the Barberton Makondra Mountains probably than anywhere else in the world about the early earth and the formation of the oceans and the continents. And it also so happens that these rocks were laid down at around about the time that life began. Mm. So there's no bigger question in science than how and where and when did life begin. Mm. And that really is one of the key values of the rocks in these mountains. Mm -hmm. Now, Tony, talking about the genesis of life, can you just tell us these rocks here, what is their approximation in terms of how old are these rocks? People are talking billions of years. The rocks here are 3,600 million years old. 3,600 million years old. That's 3.6 billion years. Mm. Mm. And that's one of the um, values here, and I found bringing people up here and trying to get them to stretch their mind to think that long ago, mm. and to think that in that time, these rocks have been below sea level and above sea level, mm. and have moved probably sideways as well, many times in that all that time. Hmm. And a lot, we've got one of the oldest beach sand deposits here on the Geo Trail, the earliest beach sand deposit known anywhere, and it's now a thousand meters above the sea. Hmm. It's probably been below sea level and above sea level many times in, in the intervening millions and millions of years, hmm. because the surface of the earth is moving. Mm. up and down and sideways. Mm. If we talk about Babatin Makonjo Mountains as a well heritage site, how big is it? And also just talk to us about the sites or the attractions. How many sites are here? What is the size of the area? The only tourism product in the World Heritage Site at the moment is the Geo Trail. Mm. It's about nearly 40 kilometers long mm -hmm. and there's about 12 sites on it. Okay. with explanations like you'll see around here okay. with displays of rocks and panels which explain mm -hmm. them. And that was constructed, in fact, before the World Heritage Site was created. Mm -hmm. It was constructed by 2014. Mm -hmm. The whole area of the World Heritage Site is about 113,000 hectares. Mm -hmm. It stretches from close to... Um, Lowe's Creek in the northeast to Butt Plas in the southwest. Mm. And from Barberton in the northwest to Bulembu in the southwest. Mm. 
and or southeast rather. So it's a big piece of country. It encompasses about 40% of the Barberton mountain land mm. and the whole of the Barberton mountain land uh, contains these very old rocks, mm. known to be also the source of quite a few valuable minerals. Mm. And at the moment, asbestos used to be mined until the turn of the decade of the, of the millennium. Mm. And gold, of course, is still being mined as the basis for Barberton's existence is gold mining. Now, I want us to move to the challenges. Besides the issue of COVID-19, what did you say were the challenges that had to be overcame in terms of this beautiful facility you're talking about today? Well, the first challenge is the whole uh, message of the ancient rocks here is, is totally dependent on high quality um, interpretation. Mm. We've got to be able to tell the story and there are very few geologists employed by conservation agencies and tourism agencies to explain these things. Mm. So the challenge then is how do you set up a management agency that has the right skills mm. to develop and present the attractions of this area mm. to the, the ordinary public. Mm. I want us to talk about the future, the future plans. The site has been declared, and in your own opinion, what is the next steps? The first thing, without question, the most urgent, is to establish a management agency with some mandate to do things and a bit of a budget to get things started. Mm. One of the things would be to repair and improve the geotrail. Mm. The geotrail is now seven years old. Mm. It's showing its age mm. and it needs maintenance. It mm. needs a few things being renewed. Mm. It needs some new ge geosites mm. put on, on, on offer. Mm. So that's one thing. There are plans for two other geotrails. Mm. And the one is along the R38 Mm. towards Carp Maiden. It's recently mm. become the subject of um, Mpumalele's, uh, Michele's MSc thesis. Mm. She's done a geological MSc at Witts University on that particular trail. And there's another trail along the Kamati River, mm. which is very spectacular. Mm. So those are two other trails which could be developed. Mm. Thank you very much, Tony. As we close, I just want to give you a few, few seconds to invite South Africans, to invite people who are watching this video, who have heard about this place and they're interested to come. The, the scene sells itself. It's a beautiful place to visit. There are picnic sites and viewpoints and really interesting information and a good guidebook is all available um, if you want to come here. It's a 40 kilometer drive. Um, at the moment, the border is closed, but it would normally form a, a wonderful additional day on any visitors coming from Eswatini or KwaZulu-Natal through to Kruger Park. It's designed to be an interesting and beautiful route to connect those areas. And once COVID is back, where it should be, I'm sure it'll work very well. And if you want further information about it, phone Barberton Community Tourism. Thank you very much, Tony, for your time. It's been a pleasure uh, to have you here. We need this type of knowledge to be shared to the fellow communities yeah. that are interested in this type of stories. And thank you very much for your time. It's my pleasure. As you have heard, the Kyo Trail is one of the important attractions that is found in this area, and it's got quite a number of sites. So we'll give you just a taste of what is on offer here, and these are some of the sites that you will enjoy when you visit this area. This is where we welcome people to the Geo Trail, because this is actually the start of it, uh, the first Geo site. And it has a viewpoint here which shows you um, the 
mining activity of Barberton Mines, and of course they're mining gold, and that is the, the economic origin of Barberton, was a gold mining town originally. Um, but it's also where the Barberton Greenstone Belt, which is the Barberton Maconjo Mountains, it's just a geological term that they use, all of these mountains up here and all the way to the Swaziland border is the Barberton Greenstone Belt. And they're special because they have avoided subduction, they haven't been recooked in the mantle, and they haven't been eroded. And that's extraordinary because they, every rock gets eroded eventually, but these rocks were buried under the Transvaal sediments for two billion years. And that is why they've been preserved in this cool, stable environment of the Earth's crust and kept available for scientists to come and do their research. That is why it's so exceptional and why it got World Heritage status. These lines in the rock here are tidal marks from this, which is one of the earliest um, tidal deposits. In other words, beach deposits of, of, of sand being deposited on a beach. And these are the traces of tidal activity in beach sand. And this is one of the earliest beach sand deposits in the world. Again, 3,200 million years old. Back then, the sea was so hot, you probably couldn't put your hand in it. And yet there was life at this time. There were no continents. This was a beach on a tiny little um, proto-continent, a small area, um, and the rest of the, the whole um, world was just covered in water. This site is um, like a one-stop shop for the whole Geo Trail. We designed it for people, for instance, tour buses coming through here who would not have the opportunity to stop at all the sites, but could do one stop with a beautiful view and with specimens of all the rocks that you see elsewhere along the trail. Uh, so it's a particularly good educational stop for school buses and, and things like that, um, with picnic place, place for young kids to run around and exercise, and the information on all of these plinths um, which give a short story of the most important rocks and geological ideas that the Geotrail presents.